The latest La Nina data came in this week. Let's check that forecast. We're going to be looking at La Nina, its forecast, December, January, and February's forecast. Hey guys, I need you to do your thing. You like these videos, hit subscribe. If you don't like the videos, hit subscribe anyway. Let's get started. This is where we are sitting as far as La Nina is concerned. And again, look in this zone, an ENSO zone. These three boxes drawn represent 1.2, 3 in the 4 region. Right in here, you could draw the 3.4 region. But out of these, let's break that down, see where the timeline of their conditions have been. This is a timeline from December of 2021 up to present day. And watch as you go down this list. These are the individual boxes, those individual zones, if you will. They are all still extremely cold. And in many cases, still coming down into colder temperatures like 3.4 and 3. So the latest data for La Nina is it is absolutely in place. These are sea surface conditions, sea surface temperatures. If you would look at the atmosphere just above, and let's just use the SOI index, Southern Oscillation Index. For October, it was the third strongest La Nina on any October since 1950. That's how strong this current La Nina is. Here's the latest forecast for La Nina. Let's look at October, November, December. La Nina still wins highest probability, 100% there. There are your percentages. These are your seasons. Let's look at December, January, and February. We're seeing the gray bar, neutral conditions, increase as La Nina begins to try to fade, at least per modeling. As you get into next spring and next summer, we are seeing that La Nina has faded. This timeline is not unlike ones we've previously talked about, as La Nina weakens throughout the winter into 2023. This is based on sea surface conditions, likely weakening. The atmosphere may take some time before adjusting. And I talked at greater length than that in my snow season forecast that I published a while ago that covers all of the cold season and what we can expect as far as snowfall totals. In this one, let's just focus on December, January, and February. And it's not just based on La Nina or this region here. There are other factors to consider, like what we've seen throughout the month of November. We've had a very warm Atlantic. There's been kind of a blocking ridge that has developed along the east coast of the U.S. What that has done is kind of force the storms to either slow down or travel over the Rockies and then curve up to the north and east. Another factor, and that's going to be here in the North Pacific into the Gulf of Alaska. During the last couple of weeks, a number of storm systems have passed over this warm ocean and it has begun to cool. What this is doing is changing the zone of baroclinicity or the zone of storm development or applying storm energy. It's shifting it down to the south. So now our storm flow is going to be more south of Alaska toward British Columbia into the northwestern U.S. versus going throughout Alaska into Canada and down. So that is a bit of a change, not unexpected. I discussed that in that same winter outlook, but this is a factor that's going to affect us early in the December period and then go throughout the course of winter, all based on how we're changing the storm flow. So bottom line, quick summation, we still have La Nina in place. We still have some blocking over the eastern U.S. to contend with. That's going to force the storms as they come throughout the zone of development, if you will, into the Pacific Northwest, diving down. They hit that blocking ridge to the east. They're going to curl right back up toward the Great Lakes and then scoot past the Maritimes of Canada. That's going to be the main storm flow throughout the course of winter. It does transition a bit as we go throughout into the midpoint of winter and then retreats a bit as we head into next spring. So this is what it looks like as far as the storms in the immediate uh, future. We have all of these low pressure areas. This is a surface analysis over the Pacific. Here is Alaska, here's British Columbia, and then we go down into the east, or excuse me, the western United States. So Washington is here roughly, Oregon, and then California down into Mexico. This is the rest of the Pacific Ocean, and we have a number of low pressure centers here on the surface map. These low pressure centers are basically trying to scoot right toward that zone of baroclinicity, that colder area here and the warmer sea surface temperatures here. They're all somewhat congregating into a train, if you will, into that same zone, and that's when they begin to move into the western U.S. That'll be the main storm flow. 
what do the storms do in total? Like these are individual impactors uh, for the central U.S., northern U.S. They're spaced about a week apart for the stronger ones. And then you may catch a little weaker one on day three to four within that cycle. But what are we looking at overall? First off with temperatures. This is going to be early period temperatures from November as we get into December. We're looking at the coldest areas to be the west, warmest off to the east in the southeastern U.S. What is the entire period like, the entire winter? And remember, when you're listening to a meteorologist or a climatologist, winter is not the entire cold season. Winter is December, January, February. Those three months are winter. So that's what we're talking about here. Winter temperatures, likely warmer than average for the southwest, likely warmer than average for the southeast, closer to that blocking ridge. And what happens in between? Storm systems follow that storm flow, come into the Rockies, diving down to the south, they hit that blocking ridge and they're forced to curl back up. On the north side of that storm flow is where we have our colder temperatures. So likely colder than average across the northern U.S. As far as precipitation is concerned, let's turn to that now. Winter precipitation. Main storm flow comes in over the northern Rockies, tries to dip south. That's a dry direction for those storms. It'll leave moisture in the Rocky Mountains and close to the Rockies, but then loses out a lot of moisture until it gets off to the east. And a blocking ridge over the east, the wind flow around high pressure is like this. It's grabbing tropical moisture from the Gulf of Mexico, bringing it up almost along the Mississippi, throwing it at the Great Lakes, throwing it at the Ohio Valley. And that's where these storms, as they come through, they encounter that humidity, create wetter conditions, and then they curl on up towards the far northeast and the Maritimes of Canada. So that's the bottom line here for this winter forecast, is our storm pattern. We talked about that in terms of La Nina, kind of creating the overall pattern, and then these changes in the Pacific and Atlantic, and that's all driving where our main storm flow is. And once you have that main storm flow, that's when you can begin, begin to determine your temperature outlook and precipitation outlook. These maps, like these that I showed you, are based on analog forecasts. Analog years are those years that are statistically most significant in our record books to where we are right now. So we're looking at where we are now, the storm pattern we have now, and then historically I can pull out years that match the same pattern or come close to it. There's no perfect match obviously in weather and that's what creates these maps. So that is La Nina. The latest update, latest forecast remains to impact our winter before we may see a transition out of La Nina. Your winter is still impacted. And again, winter, December, January, February. I talked about the entire snow and cold season in a previous video. That video is getting old, but there's no reason to change it. And these changes I just discussed here were anticipated a couple of months ago in the analog year selection I made for that video. So pop back there for quick reference if you wanna see how the whole snow season plans out, but this one, covers your winter. Until the next time, whether it be the daily shower or another weather watch, I'm Matt Makins.